Thank you, thank you, Lena, and thank you, um, Harry. Um, so, um, Asian Family Services (AFS) uh, we don't, although we don't specialize in family violence support, we do. Majority of our clients are migrants, and majority of our clients do present with a lot of issues pertaining to family violence. Um, and one of the good points that um, the both of you brought up was the, the issue of taboo, especially in our yeah, migrant um, and collectivist culture, migrants who come from collectivist culture. Um, family violence is something that's not talked about. Um, there's a lot of pressure to continue with the relationship despite the abuse. Um, and these are some of the, just some of the things that I wanted to highlight as well in flowing through the, um, the advice that you gave and the, the legal um, information as well. Like I said before, during COVID, uh, during the lockdown, there was a spike in police investigations pertaining to family violence. And now that we've come down to level one, there are also anticipated risk factors um, such as uh, tighter family finance due to loss of income. There's also unemployment means um, people are at home um, and there's all, you know, COVID-19 has already impacted all of us in some ways, making us more, you know, emotionally vulnerable. So people are already vulnerable and maybe due to the impact of COVID-19, um, our coping strategies may not be, um, as high or as, as effective as it would be if we weren't affected in some way. So there is that anticipated risk, but also there is that residual emotional issues from the lockdown that can impact um, and that can cause more tension and strain in the family, and therefore more propensity for family violence. Um, also, there was this, um, Ivan, the, can you please uh, share the screen for the culture wheel, please? Thank you. I just wanted to share this culture wheel, which goes hand in hand with the power and control wheel. This is part of the Deleuze model, and I am in no way an expert in explaining that, but I thought that was a good uh, representation because if you see the middle circle, it gives several social institutions um, and, the, and the, outer, the outer lists also many different aspects of culture. Um, and all of this might in some way maintain or reproduce experience of abuse for the victim. And this is known as secondary abuse. So it, it's, just a, it's just a way, I just wanted to show that there's a lot of factors that come into play at, a, at different levels uh, to explain the individual, um, I guess, action, either whether they're a victim of domestic violence or they're a perpetrator of domestic violence. So a lot of other things come into play to actually uh, suss out or actually know why, why that person does what they do and why they choose to stay in the relationship despite experiencing a lot of abuse. Um, and, and by examining the many ways society reinforces the use of power and control, um, by examining the many ways yeah, society reinforces the, the, the use of power and control, those using the wheel can identify actions that might be taken on a personal, cultural and institutional levels to challenge um, and eradicate and, and, and understand, understand why domestic violence happens, both for the victims um, and, and for the perpetrators as, as well. Thank you, thank you, Ivan. Um, and on, on uh, and from a counseling perspective, another thing that became very clear for, for me as a counselor as well during lockdown was, especially for a migrant, migrant clients was just um, the extent of demystification. So counseling is still a very new concept in many countries, I know that my home country where my parents come from, there's nothing such as counseling and the concept of counseling is very, very foreign. Um, so for a lot of our migrant uh, clients, um, 
They don't know what counseling means. Um, they don't, to them, if they come and talk to somebody about their issues, there's still a, a great immense strain or pressure or stress that they, that information will be passed on to other people and, and that might again come back and affect them very negatively. So it's about demystification as well, going hand in hand with the support that we give is explaining to our clients, what is counseling? What does counseling mean? Um, and also the, the, um, issue of confidentiality as well, to try to explain to them that how information will be kept. Um, because for someone to first acknowledge that something's happening to them, that they're experiencing family violence is a big step in itself. Um, and then to talk about it to somebody, um, maybe somebody from the same culture or, or to a counselor, again, is it's just it's, it's very new and it's very challenging for them. So we have to understand a, a lot of a lot of aspects to help seeking behavior for someone who's seeking help for issues such as family violence. Um, another another uh, just uh, another thing that I wanted to highlight was that under the Section Act of Family Violence Act 2018 most of us do understand that violence means physical, sexual, and psychological abuse, but there are also a lot of migrants who experience dowry-related violence. Um, and dowry-related violence is, so dowry includes gifts, money, goods, property given from the bride's family to the groom or the in-laws. Um, and the dowry, and the dowry, um, sorry, either before, during, or any time after the marriage. And dowry-related violence often arises when the groom or his family seeks continued payments um, or more goods and the bride's family is unable or unwilling to pay. So while dowry is practiced in many different parts of the world, um, dowry-related violence is most prevalent in South Asia, and in the nations in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh. And this is something I felt uh, is quite prevalent for our uh, South Asian uh, migrant population groups, uh, because th this is something that they've, they've lived all their lives believing is right. Um, and sometimes to actually bring that awareness that no, this is, this is not right. Even though it's practiced, this is not right it takes a while for them to grasp that concept that you know, whatever is instilled in them growing up their upbringing what they've seen their grandparents parents their siblings doing um, in their mind it's very even though it might feel wrong in their mind it's something that is normal so it's also about trying to bring to their awareness that even though this has been practiced it's it's not okay, it's, it's not right. Um, and most importantly, to tell them that it's okay to seek support and it's okay to ask for help. Um, that is another thing that we need to work with our clients and make them understand. So that's just some of the things that I wanted to highlight from a, a counselor's perspective and especially working with a lot of migrants. Um, so, Thank you.